Well, you join me for a 48 hour session down at a Chelmsford Club Water. I've been fishing this lake quite continuously for the last year in search of some good commons. I've caught quite a few, but my baiting approach has had to change and even my rig approach throughout my time on here. So throughout this 48 hours, I'll run you by how I've changed and adapted my bait and rigs to the seasons that I've fished it. So I'm going to talk to you about my swim choice and why I picked this swim. I've been looking at the weather for about the last four or five days and the wind's been swinging up and down the lake. It's turned yesterday to a lovely southwesterly pushing into this bank. We've got a full moon tonight. I did get down yesterday to try and get a good swim, but the lake was really busy. It's a Chelmsford Angling Association water. They've got three and a half thousand members, so the lakes will get busy. So. I've come back down this morning at first light because I knew there was a few guys going to be leaving today and I've got into what I think is a very good swim. This time last year I did reasonably well out this swim catching quite a few 30s. There's not massive massive carp in here but what they are is very old dark black warriors and uh, just the kind of carp you love to catch. So what I'll do, I'll get the kettle on, make Joe a cup of tea because he ain't stopped moaning and we'll have a look at some photos. So I started fishing this club lake probably just over a year ago now and uh, when I originally joined it I thought there was a hundred carp in here but um, it quickly became obvious that there was a lot more. I'd say there's around 200 to 300 fish, it's hard to know. The majority of the stock are commons. The average fish seems to be between 18 and 25 pound and mixed among them are some really lovely looking 30s and probably about four or five 40 pounders at the right time of the year. So I started fishing it and um, I sort of hit the ground running, was catching fish immediately. It weren't a hard lake, um, the bites were coming thick and fast and the problem was actually getting anything of any size. I'd had well over 40 fish and I hadn't even had a 30 pounder. And obviously it's not normally the kind of fishing I'd do, so it was getting quite frustrating So I knew there was better carp in the lake. So what I did, I switched. At the time I was fishing sort of pellet, crumb and boily, which is an excellent method for catching carp. But what I wanted to do is single out the bigger fish, so I just went to solid boily and hinge stiff rigs. This initially worked really quick and that session I caught my first 30 from the water, a really lovely long 33 pounder and had a couple of fish around 28 pounds so it definitely got me into the better stamp of fish. After a few weeks of um, catching fish on these two inch hinge stiff rigs, it, the bites just seemed to dry up on them and I couldn't actually buy a bite on them so I switched over to bottom baits. Again I was just using straight boily from the bag and the reason I do that again is it ain't as effective if you really want to fish effectively fishing crumb pellet and things like that you're going to attract everything into the swim and i just wanted big greedy carp so i just carried on fishing boily and it was around october i started to really get into some of the better fish um, i had a string of 30s a brace of 34 pounders and things really started to come together for me early november i had my first what you'd call one of the A team, a fish at 40 pound and a few ounces, beautiful long common. Weirdly come on a single hook bait. After all the bait I'd put in here, by this time I'd put in well over 100 kilos of bait through the summer. Um, I was going quite heavy because I was literally using it so I had to put it in. And that was my first good fish. The winter was quite harsh, I um, swapped over. Again, the bites dried up so this time I went on to solid bags a very effective, effective method of catching fish and um, I started to catch a few fish. I had a beautiful 35 pound common, uh, I think it was around January, a couple of other 30s and then the season come to the end. As the season begun I was away in Spain filming with Ridge Monkey so I didn't really get to do much 
but um, I, I turned up again probably June time and I took a little bit of a different tact. Instead of fishing out in the lake or on the bar system that runs along the bank they call the woods bank, I spent a lot of time fishing in the edges and fishing for the fish I could actually physically see. So I'd walk round and round till I found some bigger looking fish and fish for them. That way I could be a little bit more selective on what I was catching. And this led again to um, a string of better fish, um, you know, like upper 20s. And I had a lovely 35 pound common, really solid fish that I think is probably a lot bigger at the right time of the year. Uh, next session down, I landed a really friendly carp. There's one in here called Hearttail that seems to come out on a weekly basis. And I had that at just under 40 pounds. So things were going really well. Then again, I've gone away. I've been in Italy for a month filming and it really does take you out of your rhythm. Once you've got something going and you have to leave the lake for a month, you come back and a lot changes, not only with the weed and the areas the fish are in, the way they're approaching bait, you know. Um, I come back and the fish have moved away from the margins. They're now out in the lake. So the first few sessions back is a big learning curve. As it stands at the moment, I've had 107 fish from the lake in a year and um, I've got a new ticket that's come up I've been waiting seven years for. So this will probably be my last session on the lake for a while. The big fish that I was after in here has gone missing at the moment. They've got an otter fence up but it's very recent so I'm hoping it hasn't been otter food and it's just been very shy but um, hopefully that fish will come out and I'll pop back down. But um, yeah, it's been a really good year. A lot of changes, I've had to continuously change my tactics to keep up with what the carp are doing. But it's like a jigsaw and when you put it together it's all good fun. So that sort of brings you up to date on where I am and I'll talk to you about my current tactics tomorrow and we'll have a look at the rigs and what I've been doing to catch these fish. just got the rods back out. And there's a reason that I give them a little recast around 4.35 o'clock and it's because predominantly this lake is a night water. I could count on one hand the amount of day bites I've had. It's mainly middle of the night or very early morning. And because um, it's a busy lake, you can judge the bite times quite easily and you very rarely see anyone catch anything in the day. So what I've done, I've got the rods back out nice and fresh. There's a lot of drifting weed about, so I just wanted to have peace of mind that they're really nicely set. A couple of spoms over the top of them. A little bit of crumb in them. You can't overdo it with crumb. Two kilo of crumb is not the same as putting out two kilo of boilie. It won't fill them up as easy, and you can get a lot of scent and smell in the area and attraction. What did I say? Scent and smell are probably the same thing. <laughs> Nothing happened in the night. Despite me seeing a few fish, most of the fish were on my left. And I really did think they'd come up this way because we saw them creeping up, but they're still there. So I'm gonna pack my kit up, move down probably 35 yards, which in on the lake will give me a hundred yard movement because we're on a bend. So I'm gonna quickly get the gear into that swim and hopefully get on the fish. And like I said before, they're very nocturnal in here and it's very rare you get a day bite but it just means I'll be in the right place tonight when they come on the feed. So I haven't messed about. I've moved into this swim. 
quickly put a Ronnie rig on with a nice yellow pop-up and chucked it out to where the fish are showing. It's quite a silty area out there, so I've got a helicopter rig on. That way I know that that stiff boom on that Ronnie rig is gonna lay nice and flat across the silt. But while we're on the subject of rigs, I'm gonna to talk to you about my favorite bottom bait rig, how I tie it and why I use it the way I do. So the hook bait is a quad, an essential cell, with a cell bottom bait. And I slightly slice the sides of this, which gives it a little bit more flavor flooding out. Then I've got a size four beak point, an apex, super sharp. And then I've got the shrink tubing on the shank as well as on the kicker. And the reason I have shrink tubing on the shank is so that if nuisance fish pick it up, unlike a ring where the bait could settle and the ring could be anywhere, that shrink tubing doesn't move until the fish is actually hooked, which means my rig is ready to hook a fish any time. The hook link is the Camo X in 25, and I've got a small anti-tangle sleeve on this end, and I like to use the quick change swivels, which means I can alternate between a helicopter rig and a lead clip when I want. This rig, I probably had two hook pulls on this in, I don't know, 100 takes. It's so reliable and that's why I use it everywhere I go. It's not complicated, it's a simple knotless knot with a bit of shrink tube on it. So don't get confused in all the fantangled rigs that are out there. The blowback rig with a bit of shrink on the shank does the business for me everywhere. So the reason I like to use this bait like this, I shave a bit off, because in my mind it's gonna give a little bit of extra and the quad on top is not only lovely smelling, it's very visual and it's gonna sit up and it's gonna disguise the hook. So as it's on the bottom, the quad is on the top and the hook is sitting underneath the hook bait. As it comes up, the hook swings underneath and the quad will keep to the roof of the mouth of the fish, allowing the hook to drop down. It gives you an absolutely perfect presentation for bottom bait fishing. So I'm gonna get a fresh hook bait on here and whiz it out there. I'm not gonna do any spawning or anything. I'm just gonna get a couple of hook baits out. If it hasn't gone in a couple of hours, I'm gonna pop down the shop, get me and Joe a bottle of red wine, and then get the rods out for the evening. Because remember, I said, they're very nocturnal. There's a chance for day bite, but now I feel tonight we are in the area to get a bite. So let's see what happens. <laughs> I've just got back from the shop and there's still the odd fish showing so I just fine-tuned one of my spots with a marker for the night. Didn't go mad, six bombs of broken bits and pieces over the top of the bait and um, there's a few fish showing to my right so I'm going to knock up a solid bag because that's excellent for dropping onto showing fish. Presents a nice pile of bait. Got a couple of quads in there, one sinker, one floater so sort of a bit of a snowman and I can leave that out there for a few hours. And then probably about four or five o'clock, I'll redo the left hand rod on a new area. But there's definitely fish down this end of the lake. So I always like to, um, when I do my solid bags, I start off, I've got the mixed PVA pellet from Mainline here. And I like that because you've got like trout pellet, halibut pellet, salmon pellet. You've got all these different pellets in there and they're sending up a lot of different signals. You've got all different oils. I do really well on this stuff in the winter, just in small bags, but if I'm fishing solid bags, this is the stuff I'm using. So I load the bottom up, then put the lead into one corner, and then just simply fill the bag. Probably enough there. I like these Ridge Monkey bags, so they give you enough room to have a bit of slack. Then I get the hook bait and I tuck it down the opposite side to the lead. So the lead's gonna hit the bottom first and that leaves the hook bait presented on top of this little pile of food. You see there, so lead one side, hook bait's the other. Make sure your hook's nice and clear. I like to tuck the hook in into the mix so all they're gonna see is them two little baits. And give it a twist. This is what I mean by it. it's nice to have a bit of slack on the small bag. 
then just grip it between your fingers. Nice bit of long PVA tape. And I'll take a bit of that and then I'll just literally go round and round and round. Two overhand knots. Nothing spectacular. This is going to be like a 25 yard chuck. So I'm not packing it down for super range or anything like that. I mean, some people, I see people do solid bags and they're like a work of art. Like my missus wrapping a present at Christmas. Uh, this will do me. And then just neaten that up. Just tap the corners. Lick them, stick them down, like that. Stick them over like so. Make it nice and aerodynamic. That bit at the top, you can snip a bit off of that. I mean, it's nice to have this little bit of slack on the PVA. Some of them are just too small. And then that little bit at the top, bit of spit on your fingers and just twist it. Like so. And you've got yourself a nice little compact PVA bag. <coughs> Lead sit in one side, hook bait sit in the other. That's going to hit the bottom, mount and leave a little parcel of food. But may or may not bring us a bite. I don't get a lot of day bites in here, but the ones I have had have generally been on this kind of method. Let's get it out. I was talking to Joe yesterday about when you're fishing across zebra mussels, and there's a lot of zebra mussels in this area. And I like to use a nice loose clutch, because it's like anything, if you want to cut a bit of braid, the best way to do it is under tension, so you pull it tight and cut it. And it's the same with zebras. I use a nice loose clutch, so as I get the take, it ain't pulling tight over the zebras. So I've got them clutches super loose, so if in the event I do get a bite, I ain't gonna get cut off, which is quite a common occurrence in these swims. Okay, so I'm just gonna run you through one of the mixes that have been really successful on this lake and other lakes for me in the last year. And it is basically the cell or the hybrid. I sort of go between them two baits quite a lot. The link maybe midsummer, but the cell and the hybrid are generally my favourite baits from the mainline stable. So I use the chopper and I like to chop up a good kilo of bait. And the great thing about the, the chopper, if you are one of these people, you're on a budget and you you know you you want to use a lot of bait, if you've got a kilo of bait and you cut it in half, You've not got two kilo of bait, but you've got double the amount. So this will turn 40 baits into 80 baits. And the great thing about halving your baits is you're breaking open the bait and allowing more flavours and taste into the water column. So halving your baits is not only giving you more bait to put out, it's putting more flavours and smells into the water column. So I'm going to do about a good kilo of this. So there you go, that is about just over a kilo, I'd say, of chops that have gone into there. Something I do often, so I've got my chops in there, all my halves, plenty of different shapes, and now I'm going to add two nice big scoops of boilie. So I've got a nice mixture going into the lake. Then to that, I'm going to add a nice mix of particles from the power particle range. I'm just going to sprinkle them into there, not going mad. This is a mix for one rod, remember. And then last but not least, the smart liquid. If you haven't used this, you're absolutely missing a trick. This smart liquid, they won't even tell me what goes into it, it's some sort of magic, but it fills the water column with loads of smells, tastes, and it really does trap the fish into an area and attracts them down onto your bait. And I like to put a good helping of this in. There you go, good dousing. All over it, lid back on, then get your scoop. 
and stir it right in, mixing it on all the baits. He's making all the particles and the bits of hemp, peanut and all sorts, all stick into the baits. And there, that is ready to go. Lots of different size food items there, so that when the fish comes into the spot, it ain't simply picking up 10 or 15 boilies, is there's lots of halves, little bits and pieces, bits of particle, bits of hemp, and um, it will keep a fish on the spot for absolutely ages. And it's all food that fish love. It's literally a gourmet meal for carp. <laughs> So we've come to the end of the 48 hours. Unfortunately, it's been a bit gruelling. Nothing's happened. We've had high winds, rain, and today it's very chilly. Going back, I don't think there's anything different I could have done. This approach has worked really well for me multiple times on here. The only thing I probably would have done is put zigs out, but unfortunately this area is covered in zebra mussels and it'd be a less than 50-50 chance of landing the fish, and I'm not prepared to take that risk. So. I fished the conventional way. I'll be back again. Never be ashamed of blanking. It's a learning curve and you're all gonna get it. If you've never blanked, you need to fish somewhere harder, but I've enjoyed the session no end. Sat down, have a red wine with Joe and a good laugh. So I'll be back next week. <laughs>